So in this lecture we will compute what is the sample size for the comparison related to means and these are the most common comparisons depending on the on the domain but in biomedical research it is one of the most common ones so these are the different possibilities that we will see so uh, sample size uh, for a single sample with known variance and known variance these are two different cases and then when the samples are paired and uh, we will see also two samples with known variance, two samples with unknown variance, and then uh, in a different video, these are the most common ones, and then in a different video we will see uh, more advanced uh, tools like uh, equivalence test for one means, two means, an over contrast, multiple testing correction, and a summary. So let's start with the single sample with known variance. This is the same case that uh, we already analyzed in, in the previous lecture. So uh, this is the example of the of the uh, machine that was producing tablets, and it has it had to put 250 milligrams per uh, per tablet, and then. Uh, we want to know how many samples we need to detect a changes of, of 0.5 milligrams. And we did this reasoning that if the null hypothesis is true, this is the expected distribution of the observed means, uh, of the sample means. And if the alternative is true, this would be the distribution of the alternative. This should be shifted. Uh, shifted to 250.5 but here it was just one of the possible alternatives and, and then what we want is uh, to calculate this point from multiple uh, from two uh, sources so one is if the alter if the null is true then this point is mu zero that is this one plus a term that accounts for the for the uh, confidence level such that this area is 2.5 uh, percent and then the width of this Gaussian that is Sigma uh, divided by square root of n and then uh, the same point is reached from the alternative as mu1 minus uh, a term related to the to the uh, to the statistical power and then it has the same width sigma divided by square root of n and what we want is that uh, so this uh, power what says is that this area here should be should be uh, beta and in, in our example I think it was 20% so uh, what we want is that this point is smaller than this one and and then uh, or equal it must be smaller or equal so n must be larger if you solve for n here so you have n down here if you solve for n then you have this expression and this expression we uh, discussed it in detail in the previous lecture and but it depends on a term related to the confidence level a term related to the statistical power and then the variability of the observations and the and the how the sensitivity how, how small is the effect that you want to detect and yeah so we can uh, arrange uh, this was the formula of uh, giving this point so this uh, formula we can rearrange it in this way formula we can rearrange it in this way and then uh, we can add both formulas so, so we uh, add the two equations and it is like this and then we can solve for it and it is interesting that uh, this n uh, this n is defined uh, here we have used a normalized delta so a normalized delta you can rearrange 
this formula here you can take sigma down and then you would have delta divided by sigma and, and the point is that the n is a term that uh, that depends on the confidence a term that depends on the statistical power and a normalized and a normalized uh, effect size so the effect size is actually a signal to noise ratio so what is the signal that you want to detect and how large is the, is the variability of the noise that you are in which you are looking this this result and here we have a, a an example of this so let's say that you are manufacturing a syrup with uh, three milligram per milliliter of a drug the standard deviation of the manufacturing process is 0.1 milligram per, per milliliter and the deviations from the target uh, follows a gaussian uh, follows a gaussian distribution how many samples do we need to screen if we want to detect deviations as small as 0.03 with a statistical power of 90 percent and a confidence level of 95 percent okay so uh, we translate uh, that the uh, conditions of power and confidence into sets so the power was 90% so beta is 0 0.1 and the Gaussian the point of the Gaussian such that the area to the to the left is uh, 0 0.9 is 1.28 for the significance it is we do similar calculation but now the point the area to the to the left it must be 0.97 5 because uh, we want 2.5 percent of the area to the right and this is 1.96 then the effect size uh, we take it from the problem it is 0.03 and the population variance is this much and then the normalized effect is uh, this one 0 0.03 divided by 0 0.1 this is 0 0.3 so we are trying to detect a signal that is only 30 percent of the standard deviation of the noise and that requires 117 samples so that means that we will need to take 117 samples of this syrup and determine the mean of all those uh, of the concentration of all those samples and then uh, we would run a test to check whether this mean is significantly different from from the target or not okay and uh, now let us complicate a bit more the problem the, let us assume that uh, to measure the concentration we have a machine who has that has a coefficient of variation of 15 percent uh, how does this measurement error increase the variance of the samples okay so uh, we are trying to measure something that is in the order of three uh, milligrams per milliliter per milliliter the coefficient of variation is defined like this so we can solve for the variance and the variance is increased by this much so the variance of our process is not only the variance of the manufacturing but also the variance of the measurement and you can see that the variance of the measurement is 20 times the variance of the manufacturing we can also look at it here so the the, the standard in terms of a standard deviation this was 0 0.1 milligram now it is 0 0.46 so it is 46 times larger so we have much more variability and we still want to be as precise as 0 0.03 milligrams per milliliter in, the, in deviation so now our normalized our normalized uh, uh, effect size will be 46 times smaller so we want to be extremely precise in a, in a very noisy environment so we will need uh, almost 2500 uh, measurements the problem is uh, this is I agree it is, uh, it is a lot but 
the problem is that we want to be very precise. So we have to sacrifice either uh, precision or we should look for a machine that has uh, a smaller uh, coefficient of variation. It is more precise in its measurements. So I think this is a very good exercise to understand the the, the trade-off that uh, you are uh, that you have to achieve between number of samples and sensitivity and noise. So the the number of samples is uniquely determined by the signal to noise ratio of what you want to detect. So if the signal that you want to detect is really really small embedded in a lot of noise like in here the, the sigma is 0 0.46 and we want to detect 0 0.03 so this is uh, 15 uh, times uh, smaller than the signal so that is too precise okay we already know a trick so we can turn uh, as, as we can turn a machine that is very unstable with uh, more stable measurements and we can reduce the, the variability of the, of the observations. So for instance, every uh, sirup sample we can uh, split it into four aliquots and measure the concentration of the four aliquots and then uh, average the estimation of the concentration of the four aliquots and that would be the value of the concentration of the sample. So now the variability of our observations would be the variability of manufacturing plus the variability of observation divided by four because we are estimating four times uh, the concentration in each one of these aliquots. So for instance uh, if you think of animals, then uh, you would take four aliquots of uh, whatever tissue of the animal and then you would measure those uh, uh, tissues uh, four times. So each animal has four measurements. So you can reduce the number of animals. You don't need uh, 2,500 animals, but uh, you would reduce the number of animals by increasing the number of, of measurements and, and now we recompute the sigma we see that the sigma goes down from 0 0.46 to 0 0.25 and now we need fewer n this n is the number of animals it is not the number of measurements the number of measurements actually it is larger than before because for each animal you are doing four measurements so uh, that gives you 2,800. Again, 2,800 or 700 animals is a, is a lot. So, uh, what you have to sacrifice is, uh, is uh, precision. You cannot pretend to be so precise, in such, so precise as this much, in a, such a, a in such a noisy environment. But now you know, you know the tricks and, and how you can turn a very noisy uh, observation into, into a more precise observation by simply uh, repeating the measurement and averaging. Okay, so a single sample with known variance, we assume that the manufacturing process was 0 0.1 milligram. We assume that the, the uh, observation the noise uh, standard deviation was this 15% uh, of coefficient of variation. Uh, what about, uh, th this is not normally done in the, in the laboratory. The reason is that uh, you prefer to measure the standard deviations from the samples themselves, not from a presumed value of which uh, you may be wrong. So you may be wrong about that presumed variance. So you prefer to measure the variance from the from the samples and it is a good exercise the one we have done to understand the relationship between sample size and, and uh, sensitivity and noise but uh, in practice it is a, a bit impractical
So let's see something that is really done in the laboratory. So let's say that uh, you you know that uh, one month old baby is awake every uh, by night every three hours with a standard deviation of 0 0.5 hours and we presume that the sleeping period is supposed to be normally distributed and we hypothesize that babies in an orphanage uh, when they are not um, uh, attended so so much by, by their mother uh, they adapt already at this age and they sleep longer and the mean may shift at least an hour so from three hours every uh, every three hours to every four hours and we do not know the standard deviation of the sleeping time since the, this may have also changed with respect to the general population but probably it is not too far from 0 0.5 so we plan to uh, estimate the standard deviation from the sleeping time of the babies uh, uh, from the data itself so how many children do you need to examine to prove the hypothesis that they sleep longer and we cannot apply the calculations above because we don't know the population variance but we can make a, a small uh, theoretical development so uh, if you substitute the population variance by the sample variance then this calculation here that we did before with uh, that was a set that was normally distributed with a Gaussian 0 1 now it is a t-student and it is a the, the formula is almost the same only that instead of sigma that is the population standard deviation we use s that is the sample standard deviation so the one observed from the data so under the null hypothesis this is distributed as a t student and then this point that leaves 2.5 uh, percent of the area to the right it is the same point but now uh, it has two extra parameters so the, the, the gaussian doesn't have extra parameters but the t student has the degrees of freedom and the non-centrality uh, parameter and the non-centrality parameter if the null hypothesis is true the non-centrality parameter is zero but if the alternative is true the non-centrality parameter is delta divided by s divided by square root of s and now we play the same trick as we did before so we add the two equations and solve for n but there is a problem n appears on both sides of the equation so n appears on the left that is what we want to solve but n depends on itself and it depends on itself in a non-trivial way because these uh, values these are the equivalent of the 1.96 and 1.28 that we had before and, and they are non-trivial so it is not easy to solve for n here so uh, we will present a, a very simple way but uh, it doesn't mean that it is yeah it is the best way to do it okay so uh, just for you to have an idea of how the the, the t student looks like it looks like a, a gaussian when it is central so the central student looks like a gaussian only that the gaussian is, is this curve here the purple one so it has uh, the t student has thicker tails so the probability of observing four in the Gaussian is almost zero in the T student it is not zero it depends on the number of degrees of freedom so uh, when you go from 1 to 10 to 30 the T student with 30 degrees of freedom is, is almost like a Gaussian and then when it is non-central then uh, it can uh, it, it becomes uh, 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 asymmetric so that the central t student you see both sides left and right are the same so this this blue and, and green curves are the ones uh, of the central one just to show uh, how they look like and these ones here are the non-central ones so when the alternative is true 
when the alternative is true, there is a deviation, and then this deviation translates into a distribution that is non-central. And you see that it can be quite uh, asymmetric, for instance, uh, when the degrees of freedom is 1, you see that the left side looks rather different than the right side. And as the number of degrees of freedom grows, this asymmetry is uh, less and less pronounced. So here, for instance, you have it for 30, and it almost looks like a Gaussian. It is a little bit asymmetric, but not too much. Okay, so now, uh, what is our hypothesis? Our hypothesis is one-sided. So uh, it is that uh, the mean is larger than 3, and the null hypothesis is, is the opposite. So instead of here 1 minus alpha half that leaves only 2.5 percent of the of the of the uh, area of the probability to the right we should use 1 minus alpha that leaves 5 percent and we will use uh, 5 percent for the uh, confidence level and we will also use uh, 10 percent for the for beta for the uh, statistical power and, and then delta is the shift that we want to uh, estimate, uh, that we want to detect. And so, uh, as always, remind this is what, what we want to detect if it happens. It doesn't mean that we are forcing the, the system into revealing a, a difference that does not exist. So, uh, this is the one hour shift that we want to detect. And we have to use the normalized effect, but we don't know the standard deviation yet. So you will use uh, okay something that should be similar. So uh, let's say that uh, the population, the standard deviation of the shifted population of the of these uh, children that are unattended is also around the same value of the general population. So we will use 0 0.5 um, and then we normalize and we see it is 2. We can compare this 2, that is the normalized effect size, with respect to the uh, 0 0.3 that we had before. So we wanted to detect before with the, in the example of the syrup, we wanted to detect something that was 30% uh, of the standard deviation of the noise, while now we want to uh, detect something that is twice the standard deviation of the noise. So these uh, experiments should be much cheaper in terms of samples than the one before, because uh, we want to detect something that should be much, much easier. And yeah, so uh, N uh, depends on itself. So what we can start is, okay, so let, uh, I can solve it iteratively and then say, okay, the, the T student at 0 0.95, because I don't know N, for the first iteration I will approximate with the one of the Gaussian and the same for this one. So I will take the one, the value from the Gaussian and then it gives me two. And then at two, I have to round it up to three and then I can calculate for the three degrees of freedom what is this t and what is this t and I have five and nine that are rather different than these ones and then I get an n of 50 and then uh, you substitute again and you go on iterating until it stabilizes at six and this is this is uh, yeah, and this converges to n equal uh, four, and it is a it is a, a very approximate uh, method to, to calculate the n. But you get an idea of the difficulties of solving this kind of uh, of equations, where you have you have to find a point where from that point to the right you have alpha, from that point to the or alpha half, and from that point to the left you have uh, beta on the other distribution. So there are non-trivial equations. So from now 
on we will not solve them anymore so we assume that there is a method to solve them and we will simply calculate the n so we will use some program to calculate the n okay so uh, yeah so uh, let us skip this comment Okay, so uh, now let's go to paired samples. So there are uh, experiments where an animal or a person can be its own control. And this is very good because uh, you can eliminate all the inter-animal variability. So all animals are different from each other in the same way as all people are different from each other. So uh, you can reduce the the variability between people or between measurements if you measure the same person before and after applying the treatment so let's say that you are developing a cough mixture and we would like to know how effective it is so for doing so we will take n different people with cough we will measure the frequency of coughing in coughs by per minute and then uh, before taking the mixture so we measure the coughing frequency before uh, taking the mixture and one hour after taking the mixture and for an allergic uh, response severe allergic response this value is about five coughs per minute and we would like to detect a reduction to at most uh, 3.5 coughs per minute and let's say that the standard deviation of, of this uh, average, this is the average, 5. So let's say that the standard deviation is 0 0.4. And, and because we will observe during one minute the observation process, maybe uh, we uh, observe for 60 seconds and the person cough at the 61, uh, 61st, six, 61 seconds. So that that would be uh, we would be making uh, th that is a, a lot of variability in 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 the measurement and that measurement uh, error uh, we will model as a as an error whose standard deviation is 0 0.1. And okay, so uh, how should we uh, use? Uh, we have two columns of, of data. We have the number of coughs before um, before uh, applying the treatment and after applying the treatment. So none of the previous uh, examples, none of these two are, are useful for us at the moment because uh, we don't have a single sample. We, it seems that we have two samples. Actually, we don't have two samples. We have a single one, but we have to transform our data in a particular way. Okay, so uh, what is the variability of our measure of our observations? So for each person, the person I, we have two measurements. The first one before treatment and the second one after treatment. The variance of both it is the same. So it is the variance of the population plus the variance of our measurements. Now and we will call this the total variation. So now we will construct what our true measurement is the difference between after and before and after. So uh, the the true difference is this one. So the, the true measurement is this one, this difference. So that is why I said if we transform the two columns, we're transforming it to a single one, and now we are in the situation that we had before, single sample. So single sample with noun or unknown variance, so you can go for whichever you prefer. Typically the unknown variance, you estimate the variance from the from the data. But let us think of the variance of our of our true observation. Our true observation is this one. So it is a difference of two random variables. So the, each one of these variables has a 
variance of sigma squared total. So the difference will have a variance that is twice that much. And uh, we will not enter into the calculation details, but uh, the, the variance of linear combinations, you have to add the variance of each one of the two and square with the, the coefficients in front. So if this is one, so it will be one squared plus the variance of this plus minus one squared plus the vari uh, times the variance of this. So that is why we get two. So the, the standard deviation of our observations is a square root of two, the standard deviation of our uh, original observations. And then the null hypothesis is that there is no difference in the treatment. That is, the mean of delta x of the difference is zero. And then our uh, alt uh, hypothesis, alternative hypothesis, is that delta x has a mean that is larger than zero, and the null hypothesis is that that mean is smaller or equal zero. And um, for simplicity, we will use the the design with known variance, and so that um, uh, we don't get the, this extra complication of involving the T student. So the design values are, we want to detect a change of delta, so going from 5 to 3.5, so delta is 1.5, and the, the variance of the uh, total variation, not the total one, but uh, the one here, twice the total, so twice the total, is twice this much, that is 0.34, and this is variance, we, you compute the square root of this and you have the standard deviation, and then the normalized effect size would be delta, that is 1.5, divided by the square root of this, that is 2.6. So uh, this should be an easy uh, case, So because we want to detect something that is 2.6 times above the level of the level of noise and then we have the term depending on the on the statistical uh, confidence the confidence level this one and the statistical power this one and then we plug in everything into the formula and we get that with simply two people we can uh, measure this and we need a very small sample size because the, what we want to detect is very high 2.6. Okay, so let's go to a bit more complicated uh, case. So now we will have really two samples. And uh, again, we will start with an easy case in which we assume that we know the variance and then we will complicate it and uh, assume that we have to estimate the variance from the data. <laughs> So we are interested in knowing if two competitive drugs uh, taken by pregnant uh, women has an effect on the birth weight of their babies. So we presume that the standard deviation of the birth weight is uh, sigma equal 800 grams and the mean of the whole population is 3 kilograms. So uh, we are interested in detecting differences that are larger than th uh, 300 grams and we take typical values for the confidence level and the statistical power. So uh, we plan in our experiment to have N1 women taking drug 1 and N2 women taking drug 2 and then we will calculate the mean of each one of the groups and we will compare their difference. So again the theoretical frameworks that uh, we have so far are not useful, so we have to develop a new one. Okay, so uh, for the first group, you will have a number of observations. So x1, 1, x1, 2, up to x1, n1. So we have n1 observations in group 1. We have n2 observations in group 2. We will compute the sample mean of group 1, the sample mean of group 2, and our um, uh, comparison will be based on the difference between the two that we will call like this. So it is our estimate, that is the hat, so the estimate of the difference of means. 
and again this is a uh, uh, this is a difference so uh, what is the variance of this difference so it, it will be the variance of the first one plus the variance of the second one but the variance of the first because it is a mean will be sigma 1 the variance of, of the observations in group 1 divided by n1 and then sigma 2 squared divided by n2 and actually we can think okay what happens if so now at this point we would be in the same situation as we had before in the in in this example a single sample with non variance and you could design because you you already know what is your uh, your the, your observation what is your code what is the variance of that code and then you would follow this procedure to calculate the sample size okay so uh, we may wonder at this point uh, what if one of the groups is more variable than the other so what if I know that group 2 is more variable than group 1 shouldn't I put more samples in group 2 and, and then you can uh, address that in the following way you try you try to minimize the variance of your observations that is your observation at the end is, is the estimate not ob observations your statistic you, you want to compute the statistic that is this difference between means so you try to minimize the variance of that subject to that n1 plus n2 has to be constant and then the solution of this problem is this one so n2 has to be n1 times sigma 2 divided by sigma 1 so if sigma 2 is larger so the group 2 is more variable than group 1 then you can uh, put uh, more samples in group 2 than in group 1 and, and as I mentioned before now uh, that we know that um, now that we know that uh, this delta mu has a, a normal distribution and we know the variance we can follow the standard procedure and simply calculate the 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 sample size so now what it is, it is uh, clear is that you have a, well here you have a relationship between the confidence level beta delta and n1 and n2 and you can solve for n1 you can solve for n2 and this is what you would get and so this relationship here now what is interesting is that sig delta delta it is it has the same structure so it has confidence term a statistical power term and then a normalized effect but the way to normalize the effect is different from the one we had before so the, uh, the effect normalization is something that depends on the specific test that you will perform and this is taken into account explicitly by the programs that uh, you will use to calculate the sample size and sometimes it is very easy as we had before in this example in this example it was very easy to normalize it was simply uh, delta divided by the standard deviation but it can get more complicated as in this example so where we see that the normalization is not so easy okay so now we plug in our data so we uh, we have alpha, we compute the term associated to alpha, we have beta, the term associated to beta, delta, that is what the shift that we want to detect if it happens, then uh, sigma, we will assume that the sigmas are the same for the design, later when we analyze the data, we will estimate the sigmas, but, but um, yeah, at this point for design, we will take them for granted and then the normalization you see 0 0.26 so 0 0.26 again we are in the regime where we 
want to detect something that is smaller than the noise and then uh, we need a lot of samples so 150 okay so let's go now to the more practical case in which uh, the, the variability will be estimated from the from the data and uh, we will assume in this design that that the the variance in both groups is the same so we can compute the sample variance using the sample variance of both groups so the sample variance uh, in total will be the sample variance of the two an average between the two sample variances so now the sample variance of the difference is this one and this is this one and and then uh, our set variables these ones here they translate into t variables so and we have the uh, a central t for the for the null hypothesis a non-central t for the uh, for the alternative hypothesis and we have to specify the number of degrees of freedom which turns out to be two times n minus n minus one where we have n per group so we n1 and n2 are supposed to be n so this is n per group not total n and then you can compute the n and you have something like that and also you may uh, use uh, you may uh, design with different standard deviations in each one of the groups and then uh, you cannot uh, average both so you don't average both and then everything gets much more complicated even the number of degrees of freedom you see that the number of degrees of freedom is is not uh, an integer number before it was 2 n minus 1 twice n n minus 1 that is an integer uh, but here it is an even non-integer number so the number of degrees of freedom can be something really really creative if you want okay and uh, let's say that uh, uh, we uh, assume that they will have different uh, variances so that um, so uh, we, we are assuming this in this example so we can uh, use different number of, of samples for each one of the um, of the groups and now with this equation and, and this equation uh, something similar to this one to to this one then uh, you can solve for n1 and n2 and you see that it, no, it, it, it has the same structure so a term that depends on the confidence level a term that depends on the statistical power and a normalized effect size and the way to normalize it looks like the one that we had before in our previous example where we assumed that the sigma was known so this would be all for this part of the lecture so uh, now we will continue with more advanced uh, effects like equivalence test and ANOVA contrast multiple testing correction and so on